Hello, everyone. Welcome to Tech Time Live. I'm Jacob from the BEA Tech Services team, and Rob Rivera is moderating, moderating the chat today. If you have any questions or comments you want to make, please feel free to put them in the chat. The purpose of today is we're going to go over the keypad and how to program it. There are two different versions of the keypad. Not the one that's on the screen right now, but we have a 10 keypad US cell, which only has two columns of buttons. And then we have, and that's a summer version. And then we have the keypad U, which is the version you see now with three columns of buttons. There's no functional difference. It's more based on what you prefer for the application. Both offer field proven reliability anywhere access control is desired. These are standalone units, not designed for networking into a system. So we're gonna go over a little bit of the wiring. The keypad is powered by 12 to 24 volts AC or DC. You see I have two alligator jumpers right here. Red is your positive power, negative, black is your negative power. An important thing to keep in mind is you should not exceed 24 volts AC or 30 volts DC, or the unit will basically stop working properly. In general, it uses less than 200 milliamps when it's running, has a cable length of three feet. That's this cable right here, obviously, I cut it down, so you don't have to worry about it being this short. It's about a three foot cable. Also, it's IP66 rated, which means that it's waterproof and dustproof for both indoor and outdoor use. And speaking of that cable, it comes with 15 wires, but you only have to use five of them for most applications. Red and black are your power wires that we discussed previously. Pink and white and aqua are your output wires, depending if you need normally open, normally closed, depends on what you'll use and then you have a shielded ground wire. So after you've wired up the keypad to your door, you go over the programming. First thing you wanna do is set your admin code. So it allows you to enter programming mode. At default, so you see we have all the numbers here, you have a star and a pound sign. At default, your admin code is one, two, three, four, twice. So let's do it. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You get the loud beat and a red LED. You can change the length of that code and the numbers used, but today we're just gonna go over how do you change the numbers. So we enter the admin code. First thing you do, star three, red blinking LED. So once the blinking LED starts going red, you wanna hit your new, new admin code twice. So let's say you want it to be four, three, two, one. Four three two one. Four three two one. So you get the loud beep. Now that means your access code is set. To exit programming anytime, hit the pound sign twice. So notice that the LED went back to green, meaning that the new admin code has been saved and the keypad exited programming mode. This is also standby mode in general. After you set your admin code so that no one that is familiar with the keypad can access it. You want to enter a user code for zone one. And in general, in zone one, the keypad can store up to about a thousand user codes, which is controlled by the wires we mentioned before. So this is how you start programming. So we made a new admin code, 4321, 4321. You get the beep and you get a red LED. Begin, hit star and then nine, red flashing. Well, you hit zero and two. That means that you want to program zone one. So in zone one, you're going to enter a three digit number as a memory slot within one of the thousand possible user codes. It ranges from about 000 to 999. The memory slot is simply a coded position for where the user code is going to reside. So remember this number if you want to replace the code in that same memory slot later if you need to, because you can't just remove one code from the keypad. You can only replace one unless you factory reset the whole thing. So you'll notice that the green LED came on. What that green LED means is that I took too long during the programming and it exited programming mode for me. So let's do it again. Four, three, two, one. Four, three, two, one. Loud beep, red LED. Hit star, nine. Red flashing. Hit zero, and then two. Now we're back to where we, where we left off at. What we're gonna do is hit zero, zero, zero. You get a short beat this time, red LED, and we enter the new zone one user code. 
the user code must be the same length as the admin code, which was four digits, and it can't be the same numbers, which in our case is four, three, two, one. So do, let's do something like one, two, three, five. You get the long beep again. Keypad is programmed. Hit pound sign twice. Now you've exited programming. So zone one is programmed. And if you want to add more, you do the same exact process. Just change the three digit memory slot number to something like 001, 02, and so on, up to 999. So we're back to, to a green LED, and this is how you confirm that it works. So we programmed it to 1235. 1235. Two green LEDs. That means it sent out an output and it's working. Now let's say I want to do a factory reset. There are two different ways to do this. The first method is if you do know what your admin code is. So enter setup mode. In our case, we set it to 4321. 4321. Long beep. Hit star and eight. Then you're going to hit nine twice. One, two. Long beep signifies the factory reset. Hit pound sign twice to exit. So now that we set it back to factory, let's test out to make sure it did set the factory. Now the default code at the beginning was one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to factory. Pound sign twice to exit programming. Now what if you don't know what the admin code is? Here's the second method. Basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is remove power from the keypad completely. So we're gonna disconnect the positive power. At this point, what you wanna do is you want to hold in the pound sign the whole entire process of your power back in and hold in the pound sign. You heard the beep. And what that beep means is that it reset everything back to factory. So just to confirm again, we already did, but just to go over it again, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Factory, pound sign twice. And that's how you exit programming mode again. So that's basic programming. There are some other features that we're gonna go over now. One thing to mention is there is a sounder, but there's no built-in volume adjustment Installers have had decent success by removing the backplate and locating the sounder on the middle right portion and simply affixing electrical or similar tape to the sounder. And this is going to mute the sound to a lower level. One of the other things is there is also a function that's a doorbell function. And basically, what that doorbell function is going to do is there are two wires. Let's see. So there's two wires on there, and you can make it sound like a doorbell basically just to hook up a external speaker and don't apply voltage to the wires because it's going to damage it. Some of the other things that could happen is you can do a door switch function, tamper alarm and exit button wires. So the door position switch, if you're using it has to be normally closed when the door is closed and it's going to lock the door, which will override the hold time when the door is closed. This is great for stuff like shear locks, mag locks, and high security door applications to prevent tail tailgating, which also ensures that the lock will lock each time the door comes closed, regardless of how long the door was held open. The tamper alarm allows a built-in buzzer to activate if the keypad is removed from the wall. The alarm stops automatically in maybe 60 seconds or if the admin code is entered before the 60 second timeout. The feature is disabled by default. Now, I also mentioned wires for exit buttons, which are for zones one and two of the keypad. Each respective circuit will activate their respective lock relay, which will activate or deactivate depending on if the lock is fail safe or fail secure. This means that relay one is going to be activated by zone one, and zone two is going to activate relay two. And basically, that's about it for the keypad. So if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the chat. Um, there, we do have a user's guide located on the website at www.beasensors.com. Everything I just covered is gonna be on there and you might find some additional information that we didn't get to cover today. 
So now is the perfect time to ask some questions. So we have a few questions here on the uh, the the amperage that the requirements that the keypad has as uh, you, you mentioned is 200 milliamps, but is there a, a standby rating when it's when it's at rest? Sure is less than 30 milliamps. Yep. And then let's see here. We also have um, how many outputs does the keypad have? And that the answer to that would be obviously two, uh, the two relays. And does the door the doorbell that circuit when when you said Jake that um, it you're not to put power to it that's because it it puts out power to the speaker itself and it calls for an eight ohm speaker and it makes kind of a buzzing sound when you push the I believe it's the star button it makes a buzzing sound and it also depends on which speaker you use but uh, it's basically a buzzing sound that, that comes out of it. And the door switch, also another question on the door switch, um, it wasn't clear to, to someone, is it normally open or normally closed? And I guess the best way to phrase the answer would be the door switch should be closed when the door is closed, so, which is a standard kind of security door switch in that way. And then <clears throat> they just reiterate that door switch simply overrides the timer. So if you set the keypad to 10 seconds for unlock time, if you opened the door and held the door open for 10 seconds, after 10 seconds, the lock would reestablish itself, it'd relock. But if you close the door in two seconds, the door switch would see it and it would tell the lock to engage because the door is closed. So it's that's why it's kind of good for share locks, or they're infamous for locking uh, before the door reaches the close state and the plate will go up and, and interfere with the, the closing, that type of thing. I think uh, uh, the backlighting, also, Jake, there's a question about the backlighting, if it can be disabled. I don't believe so. No, there's no function for that. Um, it stays bright, which is great for nighttime or low light situations, in my opinion. Right. So it was kind of, I don't know if you can notice it when it was on there. So the keypad does light up with the backlighting and on the buttons in nighttime, or if you're in a dark hallway, it'll be easy to find this keypad because it glows up. Yeah, that's an excellent attribute of the, of the, I think that's pretty much all the questions that we have. Uh, and what one last question what what's the warranty on the the keypad so for warranty information you can get a hold of our bea sales reps for anything that you need to know regarding it yeah i would agree, agree with that we in technical stay away we stick to our schematics and relays we don't don't deal with that type of thing same for pricing uh, if there's any price you need to know go to a sales rep or customer service. They'll be happy to help you. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all the questions that we have. All right. Well, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, if you have any other additional questions, you can email us at uh, the technical services email and you can find any user guides that you need on BEAsensors.com. And if you have any recommendations for the future on Tech Time Lives you might want to see, let us know.